Welcome to our podcast, Urban Legend. In this episode, we have the honor to present you a legend of urban art, Cope 2. Originally from the Bronx, New York, Cope 2 has left an indelible mark in the history of international writing, with his graffiti decorating walls and trains around the world for decades. Since the beginning of his career, Cope 2 has created a unique and imitable style with bold letters, bright colors, and bold geometric shapes. His talent and creativity have led him to collaborate with famous brands, exhibit in prestigious galleries, and become an icon of urban art. Cope 2 is much more than an artist. He is also an activist for freedom of expression and a mentor for the new generation of writers. How did your Puerto Rican origin influence your artistic life? It uh, started when I was, uh, you know, a children, you know, a little boy, you know, um, uh, taking the trains, the subways in New York, uh, all over the Bronx with my mother, you know, with my friends and family members, my cousin, you know, we always, we take the train and, and you see all the graffiti on the train, you know, from the graffiti writers from the 70s, you know, the pioneers who start to graffiti on the subway cars. So I, I, you know, when I seen this, it just like, boom, it was like electric, like, you know, it was like a magnet. And, and, and I wanted to do the same thing. And I said, wow, look at this. I remember seeing a big uh, Blade, you know, Comet, you know, Lee, uh, Tracy 168, you know, uh, Band 2, Mark 198, Mitch 77. You know, these were the, the names I remember when I was a kid, just going by like, wow, this is crazy. So I say, I want to do the same thing. And, you know, before you know it, I, um, I move more up, up north of the Bronx and I meet some graffiti writers in local and just local taggers and not big writers, but they were local and they would go to the train yard and throw some tags, but not big pieces. But when they take me to the yard, the four yard, the number four line, I go inside and I see all the big pieces and I say, oh, this is where they make it. You understand? So I say, oh, this way they paint, and then the train goes in the, and that's it. I started to make my name. First, I started to tag on the inside, a lot of tags, and then I started in the outside, a small piece, big, big, big. And then before you know it, I, I paint a lot of trains in the early 80s. How old were you when you started painting graffiti? Oh, no, I started about 12, okay. 12 years. Yeah, I was really little. I started tagging in the neighborhood on the walls, in the, on the mailbox, in the garbage, with a little marker, you know? But not cope, I, I write other names. And then I, I get cope from my friend, he was, he was writing cope with a K, okay. with a K, and then he say, I write cope with a K, you write cope with a C. So I say, all right. Okay. And then I put the two, because I, uh, I see writers like Phase 2, you know, uh, 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 Band two, King two, I see some writers that I like put the number two. Okay. So I say cope, eh, it sounds okay, but cope two sounds better. Right. So I put the cope two, you know, but I'm original cope one. Which artistic technique did you first experiment? Always the marker because I see more people tag with marker. And when I go inside the, the store, like I remember going inside Woolworth, it was a department store, and they had markers, and I would take markers, steal it, put it in my pocket. And then when I find out uh, you can use spray paint, then I, I go to the, the hardware and I steal the spray paint. And when I first try the spray, the smell, and the, the, the oh, I, I, I fall in love with the spray, and then it was always spray paint. How did the culture evolve during time? When I was little, you know, we did it for fun and to paint trains because we want to be famous in the ghetto. You know, in the, we live in the ghetto in the hood. You know, our family has no money, you know, not much money. And, you know, and we live in a poor place and uh, we always have the subway cars and or we live the, the culture hip hop. You know, so I used to b-boy too, 
you know, I would b-boy and do graffiti. And we go to the park and they have the DJ, I do b-boy and then we go paint trains. So it was uh, something for us to do to have fun. But never, you know, I imagine for this culture to go all over the world. You know, it's crazy. Like, it's phenomenal how it evolved through the years. And it's uh, after the trains, when the graffiti train is dead, then we go on to the streets. We do graffiti in the streets. And um, next thing you know, uh, I start to meet, like maybe in the 90s, early 90s, I meet some writers from Europe. And they say, oh, we write graffiti too. I'm like, you write graffiti? <laughs> Where are you from? Germany, France, Italy, really? Fuck out of here. So it was crazy to know that graffiti went all over the world. It was, it's really, you know, the evolution of it, it's really, to me, uh, uh, it's, it's insane. You know, because when we do it, when we was a kid, we never imagined this. Because we do it just for fun. You understand? So for hip hop, you know, it's to me, it's part of hip hop culture went all over the world. But graffiti, I'm more of graffiti culture, and it go all over the world. And then you, f you see that uh, writers from Europe was painting trains. And this is like, wow, this is amazing. You know, it's beautiful for me to see this. Something that uh, start in a poor area of the Bronx, which you never imagined would go all over the world and people can make money. Because after the years, many, many years, people make money yeah. with the culture. Like the Spanish, the Germans make the spray cans, they make the fat caps, they make their markers. It's a business, it's crazy. When in the, in the early 80s, when I was a kid, we had to steal it and put it in our pockets, you know? But in, it's crazy because in New York, America, we use the Rust-Oleum, the Krylon, we steal the paint. So I don't understand this, this company should take the idea and say, wow, graffiti is big. Let's make some you know, markers and more spray and make a bigger business. They never do it. So the Europeans are smart and they take the culture and make business. It's life, you know, it's human nature and people have to, if they have an idea, to make money, to make business, to, to, to live good, to make for their family, children, grand, grandchildren, why not? And it's uh, crazy because a lot of uh, some New York graffiti writers, they don't like it. They get angry, oh, they take our culture, blah, blah, blah. It's what you can do, you can do nothing, but support and be part of it. And everybody work together. It's always my, my uh, thing for everybody to work together. You know, because I remember in the 90s, there was graffiti magazine everywhere in Europe. Graffiti magazine all over. And um, I would get them. I would go to Tower Records. I don't know if you know Tower Records. They would have a whole bunch of graffiti mags. I said, whoa, what the fuck is this? And I take, I said, wow, one from Paris, Germany, uh, 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 Brussels, uh, uh, the Netherlands, you know, it was graffiti magazines from London, all over fucking Europe. So I say, wow, it's cool. So I start to uh, send photos, you know? And when I send photos, they get happy, they write back, no email this time, you know? It was a letter, you know? So they say, uh, oh, Cope, thank you for support. You know, they get really happy because uh, they don't think New York, some New York writers will support, you know? But me, I was like it, you know, I, I was like, well, this is cool. But my friends, they tell me, why you support these fucking people? But come on, it's, it's, it's the culture, it's, it's all over the world. You cannot stop it. You're gonna stop it yeah. because you don't like it? It's never gonna happen, you understand? Yeah. So it's better work together because it's your culture. Be happy someone wants to take your culture and be part of it, you know? But I guess some people are just stupid, jealous, whatever. So uh, then I become in all the magazines in Europe, and that helped me. Then I make a video in 2000, and I fly to Germany, and next thing you know, when I come to Germany, I had the trains. I said, this is crazy. Do you have friends in Europe? Now, yeah, all over, yeah. 
all over the all over well, Europe. So it's good, you know. Well, all over all Italy. I have some friends in Milan. I have friends in Mestre. You know, KD Crew, Zor, Slog. You know, I have friends in in Paris, in in uh, London. I have everywhere. Yeah. I make friends, and that's what is good. You make friends. You make uh, good friends with good people, man. You know, that's what it's about, you know, and have fun. Because uh, in life, it's short. It's very fast. One day, I'm 16. I make a baby, a son. Now I'm 55, and I have grandchildren. And I say, wow, what the fuck? It goes fast, very fast. The years, it's really fast, you know, so. Do you prefer painting compass or trains? I do everything. Me, I just, not some writers, they just do one thing. You know, some graffiti writers, they stop graffiti and they do street art. Or they stop graffiti and they only do canvas. Yeah. I do, I, in New York, I still bomb on the street. I still paint trains. I don't give a fuck. I, because I love it for, for, it's the passion, you know, to paint. When I go into Europe, if I can paint trains, I paint trains, illegal. I do bomb, I do pieces. To me, it's my, uh, it's my passion, it's my love, and it's my business too. Yeah. You know, because in about, let's say, yeah, 20 years ago, I, I, I get tired of working. I say, ah, I worked so many jobs, and you know, it's hard. You make a lot of money and then you get paid, it's finished. Pfft. Bills, 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 bills. But my friends and my mother say, make canvas. And I'm like, canvas? Ah, I don't know, it's not gonna make money. Nobody's gonna buy a cold canvas. But my friend John One, you know John One? I know John One many years and he say, Cole, make canvas, man, I'm telling you, you can do it. Make the bubble on the canvas, that's it. Yeah, you think so? He says, yeah, I'm telling you, man. I go to Paris in 2000. I did a Cosmopolite event. It's this, every year they make, you know, the crew, Mac crew. And John One come and we talk about the early 80s when we used to chill. Because John One go to, to Paris in, in 86 and he stay there. You know, he live and he make a life and he's like Picasso now. It's crazy. And um, because in New York, he take a lot of drugs and if he didn't go to Paris, he'd be dead. You understand? So when he go to Paris, I think he saved his life. Okay. You know, which is good. And um, so he told me, do canvas, man. I'm telling you. And A1, TDS, the Def Squad, A1, he passed away. He's another friend of mine. He moved to Paris. He's telling me, yo, make canvas, bro. Fuck this sh I'm like, ah. Because if you, if you are hardcore graffiti in New York, right, in the Bronx, you do trains, you do walls, you fight graffiti writers, whatever. And you do canvas, they say, ah, oh, you sell out. Cope is sell out now. He's a star, superstar. But you got to say, I have to pay bills. I have two children now. <laughs> it's no more a game, you know. It's I get older. I cannot keep go to jail for selling drugs because I have to sell drugs and work to make money. So I work and I sell some weed to make extra money. And then I sell some cocaine and to make money, but I get caught and judge like, you come again, you go to jail for three years. I say, oh, fuck this shit. You know, I don't want to go to jail, I have children. So I say, shit, man. All right, canvas, we try it. So I start to do canvas, little, and I start to sell it. I do some shows in like graffiti shops in uh, California, New York, and then I come in 2000 to Europe for my video, Kings Destroy, and then I start to uh, meet a lot of people, yeah. and they like me. They're like, yo, you want to make an exhibition in my shop? And Okay. Then I sell a canvas, maybe 500 euros, 200 euros. I say, whoa, that's cool. You know? You, and then the years, you just do more and more, and now it's bigger, you know? And I say, this is my life, you know? It's, uh, but I never stop uh, being uh, true to the street, you understand? 
Tomorrow, if I make a million dollars or 10 million or 1 billion, I still go paint a train. You understand? Because it's in my blood. It's in my, it's in my soul. I love this shit, you know, to go on the train and paint and then go. And you feel good. It's like, ah, it's like a drug, man. It's crazy. But, you know, it's just what I love to do. It's, it's, the, it's in my passion, you know. It never dies and it's something, it's what I love to do. The world of art has become a business. In order to be a part of it, is it useful to surrender yourself with a team of people or is it better to fly solo? I think, yes, I, I need a team because uh, for me now it's too much. It's crazy, man. It's in the, in the Instagram every day, every day DM. Cope, I want this, I want this. Uh, you have this, you have that. Oh, shit, it's too much. And the website, you know, and the people go to the website and they email me. Collectors, I get a lot of emails. Can you do commission? This, it's, a, it's really crazy. It's really crazy now, and, which is good, but I do everything uh, alone. I used to have a, a partner to help me, but we was together and for 12 years we have a baby, but now we split about six years ago and she's an artist now. She's a big artist and she wants to do her own thing, which is cool, but, you know, then I go back to, it's like I do everything, everything. I'm my assistant, my, I do everything. But when I go back after Tokyo, I have to get uh, some help because I can't, it's too much stress. It's too fucking much. It's like, it's just a good thing, yeah, I thank God every day, but you, I need help because it's too much. I need some like assistant to do, okay, you, you talk to them. <laughs> you talk, because now I'm 55, I have lot, you get a lot of anxiety and, and a lot of stress. You're like, oh shit. You know, sometimes you make things wrong, you have to do it again, and then, uh, or you forget to ship something, or you forget to do something, and because you're doing so many and so much. So it's good to have someone to be, cope, I need this, you have to do this. You're, okay, okay, okay. What does inspire your art today? Where do I get my inspiration to do new art every day? I mean, it's just natural. For me, it's like a natural, you know? It's like, uh, when I do trains, when I was a young kid, I never make sketch on sketchbook. I go to the train yard and I think, all right, I do this style. You know, it comes natural. And uh, the same today, you know? But I like to go to uh, exhibitions. Like, let's say, uh, I will go to maybe in New York, they had a nice exhibition of Jean-Michel Basquiat. He's one of my idols. Yeah. Oh, trust me. Look, I have a... What is it? What is it? Uh, I have it here somewhere. The, the Basquiat. What the fuck is it? I think it's in the back. But um, I go to the exhibition or maybe Keith Haring, or oh, cause, you know, cause I go and I see, and, and it gives me like, I look and I say, wow, it's fresh, nice, you know. Me, never, I never get jealous, I never hate, never. A lot of people get jealous, they hate, and they, ch -ch 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 -ch. no time for this shit. If someone is good, you look and you say, I want to do like this, but for me, you understand, my style. And um, you do it, you know, you just push yourself. So I get inspiration from, from other, other artists too. Not to do like them, but when I watch their exhibition, I, I, I feel the energy that they put in the exhibition. And I say, oh, this is nice. I go back and I make some paintings, you know, and then you, you paint and you just, you come natural and you do, and you do nice yeah. pieces. You use so many different styles. Which ones do you prefer? Well, I was, uh, I started New York, you know, New York style. When I was young, watching uh, Mitch 77, you know, Tracy 168, Peanut 2, you know, um, King 2. So the graffiti writers from the 70s, you know, the New York subway style, you know, I like the original Phase 2. You know, phase two is like one of the, the original legends of style in New York. And he influenced a lot of Italian writers I, I know. 
from the history. And, um, but really just New York style, original New York style. I never tried to, uh, to do anything too crazy because, man, you see some style now in Europe, it's insane. It's insane. The colors, the style, the connections. It's like, sometimes you look at it on Instagram and you say, wow, what the fuck? It looks like almost like digital, like in the computer. You know, but it's not, you know, some guy just used a spray and it's too much, like, man, but it's really great. I love it, you know, and that inspires me, too, when I see a young writer do a crazy style from Europe or even in America, you know, and, and it makes me want to do a, a new piece with nice colors, you know. So I get inspired, too, by new writers, too, you know, it's it's. It's the culture to me, you know, you always get inspired by other, from old school and new school. It's good to mix old and new, and you get inspired and you mix it, and you put your flavor, and you always be relevant, always, naturally. In which way do you describe your style? Well, it depends. I can do simple style, readable, clean, simple style like Dez used to do. I used to really like Dez TFA, K Slay who passed away, rest in peace. I remember his pieces in 81, 82. He had nice, clean, simple letters. Dez, Dez, and scene. Scene, I remember in, back in 80, 81, 82, scene always have nice, clean, simple letters. When the train come, it's scene, nice and clean. You know, I always liked this style. But, you know, I always like to do the arrows and the connections, like Case 2 and Mitch 77 and T-Kid. You know, those are the styles I like, you know, from, from back in the days, uh, original. Case 2, rest in peace, TFP. He's one of my mentors. He showed me a lot of style with connection and arrows. So I try to keep it like original style from New York, from like Case 2. New York City has been a great inspiration for your art. In fact, you've created for Huniro's project a work dedicated to Wu-Tang Clan, a New Yorker highly influential hip-hop group. Can you talk about it? Man, Wu-Tang Clan, pff, it's amazing. Because I remember when I first see Wu-Tang Clan, I, I'm, I'm watching, I think, Video Music Box in the 90s, and I see the video and I say, what the fuck is these guys? They are crazy. <laughs> they smoke too much. I say, it's black guys. They make music for Chinese. You know, Wu-Tang Clan, Chinese, black. I didn't think they were going to make a big, you know? I say, this is a joke. You know, it's like uh, they take karate movies. But it was good music, you know, in the beginning. I say, wow, this is funny. And then the months go by and they get big and big. And I say, wow, Wu-Tang Clan. I love Wu-Tang Clan. Yeah. They, were, they make their style different, you know. And it was so many of them, you know. Method Man, Old Dirty Bastard, Ghost Face Killer. It's so fresh because there's so many of them. It's like a, like a Marvel and DC Comics. Everyone is a different superhero. You know, it was really cool the way they do it, the, 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 the team, you know, Wu-Tang Clan. So they just get bigger and bigger. And uh, it, it's really, I went to a few concerts and I watched them live, how they come on the stage and all of them, 20, 30, and they go crazy. So it's there. And I meet them, you know, really good guys. They were really cool. Yeah. I remember when we do uh, the Mark Echo getting up game. Uh, I don't know if you see the Getting Up game with Mark Echo. I'm one of the legends in the game. And Raekwon, he do uh, the voice for one of the characters. So we do uh, a live sign-in in Virgin Records. You know Virgin Records? Yeah. In uh, 14th Street. So we do a live sign-in, me, Raekwon. No, not Raekwon. Um, the Rizzer. The Rizzer. The Rizzer. I get confused. The Rizzer, he's one of my favorite. He's a good actor, too. He make a lot of movies now. And he's a really good actor. I think he's a really good actor. It's really cool to see them go from rap to acting because some people cannot act. They can sing, but they can't act. It's terrible. But he go from rapping to do acting, and he's really good. 
So the Rizzer, I meet him, and he's a really nice guy, man, you know. I meet Method Man, you know, you meet them just chilling in New York. You go to clubs, and they are there smoking, and oh, what's up? So yeah, you meet, I meet all of them many years ago. And um, so when you tell me about the project, and I say, what the fuck, uh, cope inside the Wu-Tang? I say, man, this is crazy. So I make the first one on the wall, and I, I, I say, damn, I don't like it, it's not good. Because I didn't think it was gonna, you know, the thing is when, when you told me, when you contact me, Honoro, 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 I didn't put it together with the, with, you know, the, the Honoro, the original from here, I didn't, I thought it was someone else, you know. Then when I put it together and I see it on Instagram, I said, oh shit, it's the people that make the prints. Fuck, wow. That's how crazy sometimes my brain is. You know, I, I don't put everything together. And then I find, I say, oh shit, I gotta do this wu tang better. <laughs> so then the first one I make, it's terrible. And I say, and you say, it's no good, Cope, you have to make it like this. And then you send uh, the second one. And I remember, I say, I have to make it more small, Cope. And when you send the graphic, I say, yeah, make it like this. So then I, I do the second one, and it's way better, much better. I hope you like it now. Yeah. <laughs> and I say, wow, this is going to be cool. But I didn't think it was for a print. I thought it was just for personal collection. You know, you take it, frame it, and put it in the office. But that's a really cool, the cool thing about it, it gave me a good idea to make an exhibition with uh, some labels of rappers, like the logos of the rappers, I can put the logo and put the cope inside the logo, you understand? And then make an exhibition. So when I do this, it gives me an idea for exhibition. I can make a New York, you know? And it's really cool because all you have to do is paint the logo and then you do the coat bubble inside the logo and you make an exhibition, 15, 20 pieces, make one, two prints, boom, it's really cool. I never see a writer do this, an exhibition like this, never. So this idea with the Wu-Tang is a good idea for me. So it was a good idea, it was perfect, so. The Wu Tang Cope? No, uh, any, uh, any work of art, uh, the process uh, that you did. Uh, it depends what I'm doing. You know, usually it's uh, if I'm doing mixed media, like abstract, sometimes I use paper, I use some little bit of stencil, you know, to give it flavor. And um, like in, 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 in France, you know, it, it, in the beginning it was hard to, to, do, to sell graffiti. Because the galleries, they don't like graffiti. It's strange. So, but they like the street art more. You know, the street art was like more bigger than graffiti. So they would like to maybe buy a simple stencil of some street art than a burner of a, maybe a big graffiti writer or any writer that do a burner on a canvas with a lot of colors. You know, they buy the stencil. So I say, wow, that's crazy. I would buy the graffiti. But it's more better for me. But I say, man, how can I uh, mix graffiti with, with, the, with contemporary? I, I try to think. And uh, so, because I want to stay uh, within my essence and my, my originality of my style. So when I start to uh, put some paint, and, and then when it dry, I do more tag. And then more, I watch Basquiat, you see? I watch Basquiat and I say, wow, when I see Basquiat, he write and then he paint. When it's dry, he write again. Yeah. I say, that's a good idea. But I do my style, you understand? Yeah. So when I do the cold piece, let's say, then I put some paint. When it dries, then I throw tag, coke to Bronx, blah, blah, blah. Dry, put some more paint. And then when I start to do this, the friends say, oh, we love it. And I start to sell so much of this shit. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah then I get to big solo shows in Paris and all the paintings were selling. And I was like, wow, that's cool. But I still get to be Cope too. 
You know, I didn't change or just, I just put some paint and <laughs> just a little bit of pink, blue, and uh, it made it, you know, it, it became cool, you know, and people loved it. But the bubble, people love the bubble, you know, because I do it so many years, you know, like 40 something years from the subway, the streets, onto a canvas. Because I watch scene, you see scene, he makes his, his bubble famous. And scene tell me, cope, do a lot of bubbles, a lot of bubbles. People love your bubbles. Yeah. So I get influence from other writers too, you know, like scene, John Juan, these are people who have do galleries for many years already. Because scene, he do galleries in the early 80s, he been doing gallery scene, long time. For, with galleries from, from Europe, from, from Holland, you know, and John Juan in Paris from already the 80s. So they know already what to sell, what I can sell in the gallery. So they tell me, do coat bubbles a lot, different colors. Yeah, so I'd start to do and I sell so much. What is your idea of street art exhibitions in museums and events? I mean, they do museums. They've been doing graffiti and street art. Yeah, they do it. They do it. I did one in Istanbul okay. in uh, about six, seven years ago. It was called uh, um, Language Off the Wall. And it was me, Futura, John Juan, Tilt. Um, it was a lot of nice writers. And a lot of museums now all over the world, they are doing exhibitions with graffiti and street art, which is good, you know, because it shows that they are, they are starting to really look into and really appreciate the art, because it's art too, you know, regardless. It's a person's personal expression. It's their passion, they love to paint. They love, if it's, you know, graffiti, street art, pop art, you know, it's art, and art it's amazing because it comes different ways, all different pop art, urban art, fine art, contemporary art, abstract, mixed media, graffiti. It's so many different kind of art. So if you are a museum of art, you should definitely always do something with graffiti and street art because it's art, regardless. It's, a it's very difficult for artists to have their space in the art system? So, uh, I think in time, it takes time because some museums don't want to do it, some galleries don't want to do it. They're like, ah, no graffiti. It's in the street every day, you know? I understand. But it takes someone to, to say, no, this is art and really convince the museum you have to do this, and, and sometimes it's just someone to convince and really push. But they've been doing it for a long time, but not like it should, like it should do all the time, or, or wait till you are dead and then say, oh, now we do museum show of this writer, he, you know, he died 10 years ago, you know, it should always be. Uh... But I think in time, it would, it's just going to get bigger. It will in time for sure. It's common sense. It, it will get so big and it's good for everybody. Yeah. But it's just time, you know, it takes time and it will get bigger. Of course it will. Yeah. How were you able to take your own place in the system? My pl I, I don't know. I just do it. You know, because, you know, there's so many writers, so many artists, yeah. you know, they are big that, you know, it's like, you can say almost a competition, but I don't look at it as competition. You know, I do it for fun. If I can be in a big museum, I'd be in a big museum. If not, it's okay. If I be in a big gallery, like a uh, level art gallery, it's not the big gallery in, 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 in Rome. You know, it's not like a, you know, I'm not going to sell paintings for five, ten thousand, 10,000, but I do it because it's fun. You understand? I do it for fun and for, for, to support the gallery too. You understand? Yeah. And that's how my way I, I support a small gallery, small writers, small city. I don't want to be like if I become, some writers or some artists become big and they have big head. 
and they only do big gallery, which is okay, I understand, but I think you should do all kind of gallery. You know, it's like, like uh, example, cause. I know cause, we used to chill in 95, 94, 96. We paint some walls. I know when he do graffiti and I watch him when he start to do the companion and I say, what is this shit? <laughs> but he make it so big all over the fucking world with toys, galleries, it's crazy, man. He is like a genius, very smart. Yeah. He's different now, it's like a level, it's like too, too high, <laughs> it's, it's too, cause went so far, it's amazing, you know, and I'm happy for him because it's crazy how he, he become from a young writer from New Jersey who do some freight trains and some walls. I paint some walls with him and he just go Now, his painting is thousands, 200, what, 100,000, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> In short period of time, you know, he's, and he's young, he's younger than me, you know, it's like, wow, that's very, to me, inspiring to see this guy just get so big so fast. It's amazing, you know, and um, that's inspiring. Even though I watch people like Futura, you know, he inspires me, Futura, because he's like a legend from the galleries. Futura start in the subway and go straight to gallery. So Futura do galleries from the early 80s. He's been doing galleries nonstop. He's like a legend, man, and I watch him and but me, my place, I think, is just to keep doing it and uh, be cope, be raw, be original, and people love it. You know, they, people know. People know what I do and they like it. And you keep doing it. It's your legacy. You keep, because when I'm dead and gone, you keep, do, it's going to keep going. You know, when I do exhibitions or when I do paintings and I Paintings, when they give it back to me, I put in storage. You know, I have thousands of paintings away in the storage. So when i gone, my kids and children can sell them, you know, and I can be like Basquiat and all these people, <laughs> because that's what's going to happen. When your name becomes big and you die, your art becomes more bigger. It's crazy, but it's the truth. Do you think art can change society? Well, art can change society in the way when you do murals. You know, some people, they come and they do murals really nice in, the, in, in let's say, in a nice city. You know, some cities in America are really bad. It's fucked up. You know, so they get some artists from all over, they come and they do big murals on the side of the walls, the buildings. So the art makes the, 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 the town and the, 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 society, the, the whole city really nice. It helps make it more nice, the art. So I think art is always good, you know, for society and, and to help, you know. And for kids that don't have nothing much, you know, in, in the society, and they want to be artists, but they are afraid, you know, if they watch other artists, you know, like me, you know, seeing, it could be anybody, Cause, Crash, Days, you know, anybody, Dime from Germany, you know, so many great artists, you know, from all over the world, you know, you can follow them and you can get inspired and you can do it too, you know, and, and art is a good thing because it makes you do good things. Art is not a crime, you know, a criminal thing, you know, unless you do it illegal, <laughs> like graffiti and you go on the trains is different or bomb the streets. Okay, but sometimes you start this way and then you go onto canvas and you become big. Yeah. And uh, for you? Mm. What are the main themes of your art? You can come from nothing and become something. Because I had nothing when I was a kid. I paint subway trains. I come from a family, poor. And through the years, I paint the streets. Then I go onto canvas. And my graffiti 
take me all over the world. Because of graffiti, I went all over the world. You understand? Mo Moscow, Tokyo, all of Germany, all of France. I've been to many cities in Italy, you know, and, and, and um, the Netherlands. So I've been to Morocco. It's crazy when you, you say, wow, graffiti has taken me ev almost everywhere. You know, it's really a beautiful thing. So it's a good thing when you, when you have nothing and graffiti can take you all over the world because if I never did canvas, let's say, and I stay working in New York and I stay working maybe uh, doing construction, I'm not gonna go nowhere, you understand? I stay work every day, nine to five, do construction. Construction, but graffiti, it take me whoosh, all over the world. So it's really an amazing thing that you can do graffiti and art and take you all over the world. So that's a good inspiration for kids who are young. You know, it's a message that you can have nothing, but you can become something. So never give up either, you know, because some young kids are, are oh, I'm never going to, I can't do it to like Cope and John Juan and, you know, I'm never going to make galleries. Never say this because I say the same shit. I say, oh, I can't do fucking galleries. You crazy? It's never going to. I did so many shows all over. It's crazy, you know. And now I do shows wherever. It's for fun. I, I'm happy now. I just like, wow, okay, I do a little show in Rome. And then I go home for one week and I do a show in Tokyo. And I got more shows. I got one in uh, Barcelona in November. So it's, it's, a, uh, it's a blessing. What is being the king of kings like? It's uh, when you say like uh, king of kings, it's like you're the king of kings. It comes from when you're doing subway cars. You know, when there's the subway cars, when we be, do subway cars is to become the king. You want to be the king, have the most on the subway line. And um, when you become the king, you are the king of all the kings. And it's an old saying like uh, in the old days, you know, and, and they, you know, when kings rule castles and, and countries, they always used to say this. So it's an old saying, but we say it in graffiti too when we are kings. And sometimes we do it and put it in our paintings, you know, because... We are kings in our own world of graffiti. How do you react to critics and public opinion? You know, in, in, in life I learned that um, in anything, when you become successful in your craft, if you become a successful rapper, if you become a successful boxer, a successful lawyer, a successful doctor, there's always going to be someone they are doing the same as you, but not as good as you and not better than you are going to get jealous and they are going to hate. So these people, what they do is they start to, to say bad things about you. And when the social media comes, right, a few years ago, many people start to try to uh, trash me. Like, cope, fuck this, cope this, cope that. And I say, what the fuck is this shit? But I notice it's from people that maybe know me from New York. You understand? So I say, wow, why, you know, why are they saying this shit, man? Assholes, blah, blah, blah. So you try to ignore it, but it gets sometimes on your nerves. You know, it gets you upset because you are normal. You know, it's like if you go to work and one of the person in your job start to annoy you, you're gonna get upset and you get into an argument with them, you know, you know? Or in your house, you can argue with your brother, your sister, your mother, your father. It's just normal to, to argue with people. Or your friends, you can be in a party or drinking in a, in, a, in a bar and you get into an argument with your friend and it's normal, it's human nature. We all argue, but the social media, People say things and you don't know who it is sometimes because they have a fake account and you don't know who's this fucking guy, you know. And then you learn it's people you know, they make fake accounts because they know you, they see you, 
and they, they make believe they are like your friends, but they are not. They really are jealous, and they just make these fake accounts and try to uh, trash you. And me, I'm a type of person, since I was a kid, I always get into fights, you know, and, and my mother always teach me never to be scared or let anyone bully you. Or if someone bully you, you fight right away. You don't be afraid. So I always have this thing, always fighting, always fighting. So when someone attack me, I always fight right away. Yeah, well, fuck you and fuck your mother, you know, and it's like a nonstop, you know. It's, so it's good because you um, defend yourself, but when you are transitioning into uh, a professional level, like a gallery, it's not good because when the gallery... They want to work with you, but then they say, Cope 2, okay, he's a nice work. And then this happened to me a lot. Some haters, they see I work with some galleries and they contact the gallery and say, don't work with this guy, he's crazy. Crazy? What do you mean he's crazy? Look, he say, fuck you, fuck your mother. Blah, blah, blah. They send it to the gallery and then the gallery say, look, someone emailed me this, and, but it's okay, I don't care. Some galleries understand, you know, it's normal. It's, and I say, it's haters, they don't, they hate me. So they try to stop me from become bigger. They don't want to see me become successful, you understand? But some galleries and some companies that want to do projects with me, they stop. They don't want to work with me because they don't want to bad reputation with their company, you understand? It's like, let's say, a rapper, he go to do something with, uh, let's say, Tommy Hilfiger. And the rapper is uh, now arrested for shooting somebody. But it wasn't him, you know, but he arrested. Tommy Hilfiger is going to say, no, we, cannot, we can't work with him because he has bad, bad uh, reputation, you know. It's sometimes the same for me. And it's, it's terrible because I just want to do art like everybody. But with me, it's like so many writers are jealous in New York that don't make it into galleries because they don't try hard. They do one, two galleries, they don't sell, and they say, ah, fuck galleries, I paint walls, you know? But they see me, I'm here in Rome, and they are in their home, or they still live with their mommy. <laughs> they are like 50 years old and they live with their mother. Or they live with some girl that, 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 that take care of them and they get jealous. And they go on the, oh, fuck, go. He's in Rome now, in Honoro. Fuck this guy. <laughs> Cope to his shit, blah, blah, blah. And that's what it is. It's terrible, but it's human nature. Me, I never do this. I never get jealous. I never, it's so stupid, man. If you see someone is, is traveling and and doing gallery shows in, in other countries, that's cool, man. I'm happy for you, man. And it, it, it inspires me because it makes me want to do the same. And to do the same, you have to follow how they did it. Don't get jealous. You know, take their inspiration and do it too. That's how I watch, you know, Futura, Scene, all these people who do shows in Europe, I watch it for many years. I say, wow, they do shows in Europe. I want to do shows too. I don't trash them. Why? It's stupid. What are you going to trash them for? You, you're going to look stupid. You know, and you're not going to get better. You're not going to better yourself. But instead of being jealous and hating, be positive and support. You know, and take other people's inspiration. If someone is better than you, then you, it's cool. It's okay then you have to learn to be as good as them. It takes time, you can do it, why not? You go to a party, me, I'm not so handsome, you know, made a little fat, and you see a pretty girl like, oh my God, she's not gonna like me. He comes the guy, he's nice, <laughs> nice and uh, in shape, muscle, and you get jealous of him, right? Because he looks better, and maybe he gets the girl, but, Sometimes, you know, just be cool. Go to the girl and speak nice and be nice. And sometimes the girl is going to like you and not him. Yeah. 
I meet the girls like this, really beautiful. And I say, man, she's not going to want to be with me. I'm fat, old. This guy is uh, fucking like a model. But when you meet the girl and you talk to her, she goes, I don't like these guys. They have too many girlfriends. I go, I go with you. Let's have a drink. You're like, whoa, fresh, you know? So it's... Are you happy today? Yes, you know, you have to, man. It's hard. It's hard, you know. Uh, I go through a lot of personal problems, but it's life. We all have personal issues and personal problems. It's part of life. Life is not perfect. And we have to deal with it every day. And we have to try to be our best every day. Which is the best moment of your career? Right now. You know, being here right now in Honoro is, is a blessing to be here. I can be in home uh, doing nothing and, you know, um, here in Rome, you know, beautiful country, beautiful people everywhere. And it's, you know, that's, to me, it's a uh, it's success. You know, it's, it's being here right now, it's a beautiful thing for me. You know, every, everything, every day of life is beautiful. Wherever you go in your life, it's beautiful. You're going to have problems always, like my painting is stuck in UPS. The painting didn't come in the airport. It's always problems. It's never stopped. But you have to try to be happy because it will work out eventually.